I've never been accused of being great at math, but I do know basic addition and subtraction. And that's why it was really confusing to people when I said in uh, my review of the Jumper T18 that 500 milliwatts is closer to 300 milliwatts than 100 milliwatts. Seems pretty dumb, right? 500 minus 300 is 200. 300 minus 100 is 200. Aren't they the exact same distance from each other? That's the topic that we're going to explore in this video. Because when you're thinking about the way that output power relates to the range that you get from your device, the difference isn't as simple as addition and subtraction. And this matters. Because when you're thinking about your video transmitter, if you increase your video transmitter power from 100 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts, how much more range are you going to get? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. I'm going to be honest with you. This video is a little bit math heavy, and I'm going to try and make it as simple and understandable as I can, because the topic is actually really important to everybody in the RC FPV hobby. We are using radio transmitters, your video transmitter, your controller. We are using radio links, and yet most of us lack the basic understanding of how output power relates to the range of a radio link. So when we hear that there's a 2,500 milliwatt video transmitter, it seems like a big number, but we don't have a perspective on how that actually relates to the range of, say, a 1,000 milliwatt video transmitter or what have you. If you've got Express LRS or Crossfire and you turn your output power up from 250 milliwatts to one watt, how much more range are you really going to get? It turns out that there's actually an answer to that question, and that answer is what we're going to be seeking in this video. And the first concept we have to introduce when we talk about RF signals and range is that we're going to be thinking about them in terms of ratios. So, for example, if, uh, if I, you were to ask me, how heavy is your quadcopter? One answer to that question might be 500 grams or 700 grams. But another way to approach that question would be for me to say, how heavy is your quadcopter? Well, mine is 75% of that weight. You can express concepts as absolute amounts, but you can also express them as the relative strength or the relative amount between two things. And that is usually how people think about radio signals. The exact reason why, not that important for this video. We're going to try and keep it high level. So we're going to think about RF signal to propagation in terms of multiply and divide. In other words, going from X output power to Y output power will give me double the range. Going from A to B output power will give me one quarter the range. And this matters because the absolute amount of range you're going to get it will vary depending on environmental conditions. How much range will you get out of a one watt video transmitter? I don't know. Are you flying in open air? Are there trees? Are there buildings? But if we go from one output power to another output power, the proportion of range that we're going to get in the same environment, that is something that we can actually calculate and predict. And the unit that is used to express these ratios is the decibel. Now, you probably heard about decibels in the context of sound. Decibels is how loud sound is, and that is, in fact, where decibels came from, but they're actually used to express relative power levels uh, of many different things, including RF signals. And the thing about decibels that you need to know is that they do not express the absolute amount of anything. So here is the absolute amount of gas in your gas tank, 14 gallons, amount of fruit you bought at the store, one pound of fruit. How long is this meeting going to be? Uh, got to be somewhere. It's going to be 60 minutes long. How far is it from city A to city B? 300 miles. How much money is in your bank account? $20. How many goals did they score in the game? Six goals. How heavy is your quad? 650 grams. These are all absolute measurements that express an absolute amount of liquid, mass, time, distance, etc. Decibels express the ratio of two amounts rather than an absolute amount of anything. So we could say Jill has twice as much money as Jack. It's one quarter the distance from here to city A as it is from here to city B. Your quad weighs 85% as much as mine. They scored 35% more goals than the second place team or this meeting will be five times longer than the last one. Decibels always express a ratio between two things. I'm going to show you the mathematical formulas 
for calculating ratios and for converting between a decibel and a ratio. Don't freak out. We're not going to actually dive into these too much, but I just want to show them to you so that you know that this is, we're not just making this up. So to go from a ratio to a decibel, you use this formula, and to go from a deep decibel to a ratio, you use this formula. But I prefer to just forget the formula and use a table. And I'm going to put an imager link to this table uh, in the video description. And if you want to pull this table down and print it out or look at it, you can. You could also go into a spreadsheet if you like to do that kind of thing. And you could put these formulas into a spreadsheet and you can generate this table yourself. That's how I did it. So we can use this table to convert between a decibel difference and a ratio. For example, a zero dB difference means that the two things are the same. A three dB difference means that one of the things is twice as much as the other. A 10 dB difference means that two things are, one of the things is 10 times as much as each other and so on and so on. Negative decibel amounts would mean one half, one fourth, one tenth. So a minus two dB would mean that one thing was one over 1.58 of the other. It's not that intuitive to have a decimal in a fraction, but the concept is basically the same. Now, how does this relate to the range of an RF signal? Because that's what we're trying to get to at the end of the day. The range of an RF signal is related to the power that it's output at via something called the inverse square law. And uh, the gist of the inverse square law is that if we transmit a certain amount of energy, we can think of that energy coming out of the antenna, and let's just imagine that it was a sphere. So think of it like a spherical bubble that is slowly expanding. Uh, with real antennas, the shape of the propagation is not spherical. It's stronger in some areas and weaker in others. But uh, think of it as a sphere. And as we transmit that energy, there is a shell of that sphere. And a certain amount of RF energy is spread out across that shell. And as the distance from the antenna gets larger, the, the shell of the sphere gets larger, and the energy that is spread out across that shell is spread thinner and thinner. That means that the further you are from an antenna, the weaker the signal right? Obviously, we know that. Uh, and that's the fundamental reason why that happens. So in this diagram, we can see that at a certain distance, there is a certain amount of area that the energy is spread over. And as that distance increases, the area that the energy is spread over gets larger and larger. And this is defined by the inverse square law. Uh, in summary, the way the inverse square law works is that four times the power equals two times the range. 9 times the power equals 3 times the range, 16 times the power equals 4 times the range, and 25 times the power equals 5 times the range. And you can see that there is a nonlinear relationship here. Um, it's not as simple as twice the power equals twice the range, and that otherwise this would be a very, very short video. Because we're using squares, the numbers get unwieldy really fast. Right, 25, 16, 9. The next number after 25 would be uh, 636, and then it just gets unwieldy really fast. The inverse square law is much easier to use when you work with decibels instead of ratios. So 4 times the power is the same as plus 6 dB is the same as 2 times the range. And I want you to remember that. That's a number that there's very few things in this video that I'm going to say, oh, you should memorize this. But that's one of them. 4 times the power, 6 dB, 2 times the range. Because you can add the decibels together to get the total change in range. So for example, if we had an 18 dB difference in output power, 18 dB is the same as 6 plus 6 plus 6 dB. 6, 6 plus 6 plus 6 is 18. We convert that to a multiplier and say 2 times 2 times 2 to the range. And then that's 8 times the range. 18 dB is 8 times the range. So we can start to work this with powers of 6. 6, 12, 18, and so on. Notice in this formula that the decibels add up, but the ratios multiply. So here is a table where we convert the decibel difference to the range difference between two things. And now we're starting to get to the point of this video. The range difference column shows the increase in range when adding that many dB or when multiplying power by that ratio. So if we add 6 dB, 
that is 3.98. I said four times the range, four times the power. 60B is actually 3.98. We're rounding a little bit for the sake of simplicity, and that gives you just about 2.0 times just about double the range. If we have a diff difference of 2dB, that would give us 1.26 times the range, and so on and so on. Another number that I like to memorize to give me just a little bit more flexibility in doing head math, because I don't have this table with me all the time, is that 3 dB difference is 1.4 times the range. 3 dB difference is 1.4 times the range. 6 dB is 2 times the range. You could, of course, memorize this whole table if you preferred to, and then you have a lot of resolution at your fingertips. But these two together can actually, by using this adding and multiplying trick, can actually give you a quick reference for the difference in range between two things without having to refer to a table. So let's do some examples of practical application. Let's work some of these. How much will your range increase if you turn your video transmitter up from 25 milliwatts to 100 milliwatts? First, we find the ratio. 100 milliwatts equals 4 times 225 milliwatts. We don't need a table for that. That's just basic math. Next, we find the line on the chart that most closely matches the ratio. 4 times ratio equals 6 dB. So we'll look down the ratio here and we'll find 3.98, and that's pretty close to 4. That's 6 dB. That's double the range. Going from 25 milliwatts to 100 milliwatts will double your range. Let's do another example. How much will your range increase if you turn your Express Alaris module up from 100 milliwatts to 1 watt? For First, we find the ratio, 1 watt equals 10 times 100 milliwatts, right? That's just basic math. So we're going to go down the chart, and we're going to find 10x on the chart. Uh, and then we can see that that is a difference of 10 dB and a range difference of 3.16. It's about 10, 10, 10 dB is about triple the range. Now, the inverse square law has an interesting implication uh, on the effect of output power as it relates to range. Um, because you need four times the output power to get two times the range. And so the amount of power that's needed to extend your range quickly becomes impractical. Let's say that you got two kilometers of distance off of one watt of VTX power. Now, do you think that two, two kilometers is excessive or not enough? Doesn't matter, it's just an example. But let's say that you got two kilometers of distance off of one watt of VTX power. To get four kilometers, you'd need four watts. To get 8 kilometers, you'd need 16 watts. To get 16 kilometers, you'd need 64 watts. The amount of power needed to extend your range quickly becomes unwieldy. And this is one reason why, when you're trying to get more range out of your system, increasing output power only works up to a point. It's why you don't often see video transmitters for FPV that are more than about 1 or 2 watts. Going from 25 milliwatts to 100 milliwatts will double your range and is pretty easy. That doesn't require any additional output power or cooling or anything like that in your video transmitter. Going from 500 milliwatts to 2 watts also doubles your range and is a lot harder, at least when we're talking about the constraints of an FPV drone. Then going from 2 watts to 8 watts also doubles your range and is very, very difficult on an FPV drone due to size, heat, and output power requirements. So you might say, well, if we've got a 2 watt video transmitter, why don't we go to a 3 watt video transmitter or a 4 watt video transmitter? And it turns out that we're in this place of diminishing returns where to increase our range we would need to double our output power, and that is a lot more power when you're going from 2 watts to 4 watts than when you're going from 500 milliwatts to 1 watt or 25 milliwatts to 50 milliwatts. Now, the next topic we're going to talk about is receiver sensitivity because there's two sides of any RF link. One is the transmit power, which we have been talking about, and the other is the receiver sensitivity on the receiving end. Um, before we do that, though, can I take a second to remind you that I have a Patreon. And Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount you subscribe at is totally up to you, and you can unsubscribe or stop anytime you feel like you want want to. Patrons get access to my Discord server where they can chat with other people in the FPV community, and they get access to podcast downloads of all of my live streams if you like to listen to them on your car instead of watching them on YouTube. But mostly what patrons get is the uh, feeling of giving back. And if today's the day that you want to have that feeling, if you're like, this is great content, I'm really, I'm really liking this slideshow about math. 
Hey, if that's you, then there's a link down in the video description where you can subscribe to my Patreon. If today's not the day, then uh, keep watching the content. I'll keep making it. Maybe that day will come. So receive sensitivity refers to the weakest signal that the receiver can successfully lock onto. And modern RF receivers can lock onto extremely weak signals. Numbers for receiver sensitivity are basically never expressed as milliwatt because it would look like this. 0.0000000000000001 milliwatts. Oh, and here's another receiver that is 10 times more sensitive or less sensitive. It can receive down to 0.0000000001 milliwatts. Oh, see the difference? No. It's ridiculous. So receiver sensitivity is basically always expressed in numbers uh, in units of dBm, decibel milliwatts. And I said earlier that dBm, uh, that decibels only express a ratio. They don't express an absolute amount. Well, it turns out that a decibel can be used to express an absolute amount if you just fix the thing that it's compared to. And what a dBm is doing is it's saying that zero dBm equals one milliwatt and everything else is pegged to the one milliwatt uh, co comparison. So negative dBm number refer to values less than one milliwatt, positive dBm numbers refer to values greater than one milliwatt, and it's just a ratio relative to one milliwatt. So uh, we might see receiver sensitivity expressed as a number like negative 95 dBm. In order to use this information, you're going to need to find your receiver's uh, receiver sensitivity specification. For example, here's a table from the Express LRS website which shows the receiver sensitivity, or they call it the sensitivity limit, for various packet rates. Uh, different packet rates would have longer or shorter ranges. And there's something a little bit counterintuitive about receive sensitivity. The larger the negative number, the more sensitive the receiver is because it the larger the number, the weaker the signal because it's a negative number. So a receiver with a negative 117 dBm sensitivity will have more range than a receiver with negative 105 dBm sensitivity. Uh, it has a higher sensitivity threshold, so it needs a stronger signal, so it has less range. You could also just think about it as the bigger numbers give you more range, right? Two negatives sort of cancel out. One, negative 117 dBm is a higher absolute value than negative 105 and has more range. By the way, this is the Express LRS table, which the Express LRS devs kindly put on their website. Immersion RC Ghost puts these numbers in their user manual as well. For Crossfire, I think that some of the numbers are in the Crossfire manual, but not all, and I'm not sure if tra the numbers are published for Tracer. They are out there. Someone knows them, but I'm not sure whether all of them have been published. Oh, and for Free Sky Spectrum, etc., no idea. So let's do a practical application of receive sensitivity. What is the range difference between Express LRS at 100 hertz versus Express LRS at 500 hertz? The exact same things we did earlier with transmit power related to ratios and so forth still apply. 100 hertz is minus 117 dBm sensitivity, 500 hertz is minus 105. That's a difference of 12 dB. 117 minus 105 is 12 dB. Remember that that's very convenient, that that's 12 equals 6 plus 6. I didn't do that on purpose, but it's nice that it worked out that way because we're going to be able to do this math really easily. 6 dB difference is 2 times the range. I told you to memorize that earlier, right? 12 dB equals 6 dB plus 6 dB. That means it's 2 times the range times 2 times the range equals 4 times the range. In other words, 100 Hz Express LRS has 4 times the range of 500 Hz Express LRS, all else being equal. That's how we work these numbers. So let's go back to these comments where I said that 500 milliwatts is closer to 300 milliwatts than 100 milliwatts is closer to 300 milliwatts. And now we are prepared to understand that, uh, that claim because 300 milliwatts is 4.7 dB greater than 100 milliwatts, and 500 milliwatts is 2.2 dB greater than 300 milliwatts. Because we're working off of ratios, 300 is more than twice as much as 100, but 500 is less than twice as much of 300. Because everything is a ratio here, we can see that the range you will get off of 500 milliwatts 
is closer to the range you will get off of 300 milliwatts than 100 is to 300. And that is what I meant when I was sort of talking off the cuff in that review video. So now you know about the effect of range on transmit power and receiver sensitivity. What about antenna polarization? That's another topic that a lot of people don't fully understand. DJI goggles have left-hand polarization. Analog typically uses right-hand. Does it even matter? I've got a video about left versus right versus circular polarization and which is better, and I'll put a card on screen if you want to check that out. Happy flying.